here, Click Dork here again. We're going to talk today a little bit about the beauty of green, white, and gray. As you probably know by now, dealing with Click, when you select an item like a procedure, items that are associated like the visits that have that procedure become white, while items that are excluded become gray. In this situation, if people have had APR as a procedure, they are not allowed to choose a specialty of cardiology, respiratory, obstetrics. That's kind of the beauty of it. If I click something that's gray, I ignore and throw away previous filters, which I can do if I choose to, but I'm throwing those things away. I can choose APR again, even though it's not part of the selection if I have obstetrics. That's a wonderful thing. You're all familiar with that. But what about those cases where you need or? Dalton, I want APRs for sure, but I also want patients that had obstetrics. Because of the exclusion, we need to take advantage of a couple of other features of Click that it gives you, and it gives you the ability to do things that are not common sense. First thing we want to talk about, and you may pick this up from the group one, group two, we're going to talk about alternate states. If you've never seen this before on the general tab for your document, you can create what are called alternate states. Instead of a single Venn diagram of sets, we're going to deal with multiples. I want a group one, group two, and if you've been following me, you know I'm not very creative with my naming. So I've got two groups. This list box is associated with group one. This list box is associated with group one. This list of visits is associated with group one. This list of visits is associated with selections for group two. And notice, I filter to APR, but only the items for group one are changing. The items that I have in list boxes for group two did not change. Nothing's been excluded here. They're completely independent from one another. So I can, in group two, choose obstetrics. That would have been excluded in group one, but I've got a second group, an alternate state, that's group two. Next thing we're going to talk about is variables. I've created two variables that allow me to deal with this. If I look at this first variable, I'm going to bring this in so you can see the whole thing. I'm doing a get field selection, which I'm sure you've done. I give it the field name I want, but I also use a little bit more syntax than you probably familiar with in that function. The next parameter is what do I want to use as a field separator? If I get multiple values, I can say, what are the max number of values I want it returned? I'm simply saying one. I just want you to go get the first value that the user has chosen. And by the way, I don't want you to use the default state of data. I want you to use group one, my first alternate group. I have a similar function for the specialty description. All I'm doing is getting specialty description, comma, I want one value, and I'm using group two instead. These variables are spelled out for you right here, much larger font. So if you print screen this, you'll be able to see these much better. Now it comes down to how do I get a chart to only show me values that are either this or that? And that's where we can we can use set analysis. So I'm going to look at the, this count field, this expression, and basically what I want to do is I want to get a, a 1 if it matches my criteria, and I want a 0 if it does not match my criteria. So I'm going to use set analysis. You're familiar. You put the brackets, basically define it. The dollar sign says go ahead and take other conditions. So if I had a time frame involved. If I selected male versus female, I can still apply default selections that were filtered. But in this case, what I want to do is override any selections that were for procedure item. 
So if there were a non-group 1 or group 2 selection, it's going to ignore that. And what it's going to say is find the patients who had the procedure item of group 1, whatever value was in group 1. And you remember that's pointing here. This dollar sign and the, bra and the parens around it is called dollar sign expansion. And all that's doing is it's saying, I know I've given you a formula in that variable. Go evaluate that formula and come back with a name. I then, because it's a string, have to wrap it in single quotes. So if you've got strings that you're dealing with as values, you do need to still handle the quotes around those. So I simply say, get APR, wrap that in a single quote, and now that would look just like a normal set analysis. This is something you may not have seen in set analysis as well. This is basically like a union. It says, take this set of values and oh by the way add in another set of values because I want them both. And the, the or condition here that I'm adding in another set of values is where specialty description equals O. Oh, Go evaluate what group 2 value is, come back with the word 501-obstetrics, put a single quote around it, and then evaluate that expression and give me the items that matched either condition. So I run that. If I go ahead <coughs> and sort <coughs> by count, excuse me, you'll see I get ones in the places where it matches. This is matching because of specialty description. If I were to continue to scroll down through here, we would find those that possibly matched based on APR. Okay, or I could speed that process up and I could sort and you'll see where it is APR. I also have a one. So now I know I've got ones for either condition or the other condition. But I don't necessarily want to see this data. This data is more for you and me logically to just kind of have a quality check. So what I can do is I can say, don't enable this expression. I don't want to see that at all. The count, I do want. I want that one or a zero so that the system can say, don't show rows that have zero. However, what I do not need and you'll see that I'm suppressing zero values. What I don't need is I don't need to show that column. I want the column there so that zeros can be suppressed, but I don't want to see the count. Now I see only the dimensions for the visits for the patients I wanted. And in this case, we had a unique set of conditions. Somebody said, I need to be able to select these or these, and normally those things are mutually exclusive, perhaps. I want to count both sets and see that in a list. And then they can get that data, and just like anything else, if they wanted to export this, they can export that data to do something with it. So, hope you've enjoyed this. Green, white, gray is wonderful. If you need to break the green, white, gray that happens out of the box, and you don't like that mutual exclusivity, Go ahead and do that by using alternate states and setting up two, two, three, four, five groups if you need them. Create some variables that would go get those values that you need. And then just build a set analysis expression that overrides the default behavior. I want this, and oh, by the way, give me the second set of data as well, and perhaps any thirds or fourths that you have. Enjoy playing with this.